Right folks, here's my two uh, new renovation um, projects that I've, uh, I've bought. I bought this um, 380CD for spares, um, but it turns over and what have you. <coughs> but it's got a bit of anomaly with it because it's got a different fuel tank um, and oil tank the handle. Uh, to a three, 380CD, it should be, I don't have a big stirrup like that. Um, <coughs> so I'm going to rebuild that one, I've got all parts I think. Uh, this I bought as a 380CD, um, but it turns out uh, that it's only got a 47 ball and piston, it was C solid, I managed to get it off. Um, <coughs> and apparently, after a bit of a lot of research and a, and a Husqvarna blog site I come upon, um, it's a 263CD, the 63 being 63cc. Um, and it can be verified by the casting stamp on the block of 859. Um, so we're going to get that one together. The, fun, the thing about it was. Um, <coughs> although it's shown up as a 263, it had this chain brake on it, um, which is off, I think, a 480 CD as the 263 CD, um, never had a chain brake, going by the, uh, videos on the net. Perhaps you can let me know. Um, <coughs> but it's all... It's, it's all loose now. It was absolutely in a disgusting state. Um, I'm now struggling. I usually tap these flywheels off with a punch. But I've sent for some bits and dabs and I'm going to try and uh, build an extractor. So uh, <coughs> we have these. Uh, two new ones. Hopefully they'll go with uh, these other two. These other two, which are um, up and running. Nice source out. Right, I have it uh, completely assembled or disassembled now. I've uh, cleaned all the, the uh, top parts. Uh, I've just took the crank out, uh, and the, the bearing is pretty shot, but I've, I've obtained some bearings from uh, for the 380, and they, uh, they appear to be the same size. So I'm just going to tap this uh, old bearing out um, and put some new mains. a little crank. Um, a big end doesn't seem to have any play in it. Um, right, carry on. Yes, six o'clock, twelve o'clock, there you go, that's a bit scabby, a bit rough sounding, rusted. New one, the old one, right, clean it up, right, just lining it up. Crooked. Get there. Just popped in. Just 
a little bit more. Um, what can I use? I'll use the whoops sign. There you go, nothing to it. Right, next step, I'm going to mark out a new gasket. I've took the, took the two guide pins out, one up there, one up that end, and now I'm just going to, I'm going to mark it. If I, if I can find it underneath, there is it, that's there. Just about see it. Right, I'll crack the top, top the crack, put the tank in. Lovely job that. I can tell you this is a Husqvarna 263 SD. I believe they're quite rare. Right, I've given up on the gasket, I'm just going to silicone it. <coughs> right, get the other side now, cleaned. Right, now time for the other cover and the coil side. I noticed that it has um, an oil seal and a rim in there. I don't know whether those are readily available, so you have to get down the side of the well better than tap. Six o'clock, nine o'clock. Blows. Filthy. Rotten. Rusty. Ooh. Might even turn. Crunch, crunch, crunch. And I was considering putting it back together as it was. That wouldn't have been a good thing. Got all the shit in there. Well, the debris. I'm going to wash it out in the paraffin. These are the bearings. Uh, I don't know whether you can see the number on them. They're SKF 6202 slash C3, Italy 11 and 21 gap 177 gap O. Um, and I bought them for a 380 CD, well just for some spares, I'd love to get some more. <clears throat> right, I'm going to tap it in. Hopefully. Put a little bit of oil on the outside just to start it up. I think there's a way that these go in, whether which side the, or not, but I'm going to put the, uh, the SKF um, inwards. I don't think there's a thrust in them. I'm going to leave it out actually so that you can see what they are. Rubber hammer. Oh, I can tell it's a different size. 
Just look and see if there was a chamfer, there's a chamfer both sides. Um, you might not like this, you might say, who's a dirty, dirty bastard worker? But it's the way I do it. I'm not asking you to do it. I have to put it into the shop. Straightening up. Straightening up. A bit twisted. There we go. Right, I've put the two halves together um, and we're away. Right, because the making of the gasket one successful, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna just silicone silicone it. Um, so I'll put a squeeze in before I pull it up. Blocked up. Oh. Typical. Typical. Still trying. Here it comes. Ugh. I can hear a, I can hear a buzzard out there. Right. Let's put a. Blast a bead into it. And it will squeeze out what it doesn't need. Oh, there's a little bit in there. Just ordinary uh, Everflex. Uh, just push it, push it into the crack a little bit, and we'll peel off. And it's hardened or gone off, whatever you call it. 
need to get this screwed up though before it starts going off. I think the first one's to put, uh, we'll put it all everything in. Mm. I think so. Right. Switch up. Alright, two halves are together. I'm just going to pull up the two halves. Crankcase. As I said, it's a. I bought it as a 380 CD for spares. Took a risk on it. Off eBay. Um, and when I got it here, um, it didn't say it was a 380 CD. I just thought it looked like one. From what I could see. And, but it turned out when I took the barrel off, this has only got a small piston, a small single ring piston, which was seized, solid, but I managed to get it out, but I broke the ring, but I've sent for a ring, for it. Somebody on their site, um, vintage chainsaws. Somebody had wrote in and said the 359 ring was the same size 47 pi 1.5. I can't verify that yet because I haven't got it, it hasn't arrived. Are you getting this or am I out of view? Hoping that there's nothing inside that I've forgotten. There's only the crank and the rod, I think. Pulling in there, and hear it clunking. Should see, start to see the silicon squeeze. Dowels are pushing in, I would think.
chalk them up to tight, nearly tight, tight. Could stuck them, it was at bottom dead center. That's good. There we go. Oh, that's lovely. Pop of oil, help the start up when you get round to it. going up. <laughs> right, that's the next step. The next step is I haven't got a ring for the piston, so uh, I'll have to wait for that. Oh, there's the two scabby old bearings. That one won't even turn. I don't think it has been a good idea to took the chance and stoked it up. Right, I've cleaned the piston up. Um, important to remember when you put the piston in that the arrow on the top points forward. Um, otherwise, you'll have a bit of knocking when you start the engine up because the pin is actually just offset from centre so that when it gets to CDC, and the charge, ex charge burns, expands, press it on the piston, and the piston's able to, it's not pushing straight through the center of the crank, but it's slightly offset, so this uh, arrow allows you to do that. Um, I haven't got the I haven't got the um, the ring the ring yet. I have to put this up on the side of it so I can see where the rod is. little trick you can do is uh, boil your kettle up, put your piston in hot water, the aluminium will expand and then if you quickly get back to the job, um, the 
thing can be push fisted in as a rule. Just push it past the circlet slots. I'm sure it's as far. Yep. a clip in and come back from the other side. I don't know where I put them though. Oh god. Switch up for a sec. Right, found the circlips. They were in the circlip box. Um got one in. And I'm just about to um try and put the other one in. I need to knock the pin back to it up against now. You see the groove? Yeah. Mm. A pair of handmade circlet pliers. Tricky little blighters. If it springs, you'll never find it. I can't get into it because the camera's in the way. That's my excuse. I'm going to put it on my lap to do it. And then I'll come back to you. work when you're 73. There she goes. In. Yep, next one. Let's check. There she goes. Check. Pointing forward. Right. Just go wait for the ring now. Um, I'll try the barrel. Let you have a look. Oh, let it out. Oh, oh my knees. There's a telltale mark for the. 859 casting mark for 263 CD. 63 means 63 cc's. Um, Barrel's still got a little bit of chrome on it. Hopefully, it doesn't need to come off at the top. I if that's going to catch the rings. How far down are they? Hmm. Possibility. Might be a bit of leakage. Right. <clears throat> I'll try it anyway. I'm just going to slip this on to uh, give it a little bit of a little squirt of energy oil. 
just to see if it all it matches up. There she goes. It's starting to look like a chainsaw again. Plate goes on here. <laughs> There's a plate, man. I'm just going. To... Right, the plate I referred to was um, actually the. It's the oil pump. Um, it's worth just having a look into it and making sure that it hasn't seized or there's still movement in it. And the, and the, the drive for it. Just a worm and bezel. Just getting some of the shite off it. go with that chrome missing off the top, the very top edge of the, the compression might be a bit naff. Two roll pins just there go into the two slots to locate. Some of those long ones. I can remember, man. Yeah, more like it. I haven't seen any magnetism in your screwdriver. This is the oil pump we're putting back in. Can't see, I'm going to have a problem getting them out. That one back out. There it goes. And there's the other long one.
we don't hear any noise about it because we're in an off-grid position. And what you've got is the sound of the burn or the creek if you're in America. Much more we can do till we get the we need to uh clean the fuel tank up. So I think I'm gonna give that a wash now. So these stores is um, a nightmare. It's just nothing. The only way to usually get spares for them is to buy a complete saw like this one and hope that you can either put it back together and so on. Or it services your, your other saws. Doldrums for a couple of three days to rely on the panels. Now I finally got the cases together. I haven't filmed it all, it's took me an hour, well, not quite that long, but they're an absolute hoo ha to line up. But then when you find out how to do it, it's easy. But I'll leave that for you to find out. Absolute hoo-ha. I see my silicon's melting with the uh, with whatever's in there to hold the cases together. But I might have to take it apart again, um, especially if there's petrol about the walls up. I'll lose, could lose crankcase compression. That's what drives the charge back up. Back up the um washer short. The transfer port. And into the cylinder. I'm trying to find a, a small Shake proof washer. <sighs> no, that's not lined up very well. I can't see. I've got a second pair of glasses on. That looks close. Ah, man. Well, I was only, I only had a quick look at it this morning. 
ended up rebuilding the damn thing. I still ain't got a piston ring. No going bad though. Does anybody know these shock absorbers come whatever you want to call them? Are um, universal. handle off to try and get the I'm glad I did because it's absolutely jam packed with bloody shit. Well I'd call it shit. Gonna make this one adults only. Uh, handles clean. The uh, thing is, where does that spring go? It in its inside, doesn't it? The wee spring. She goes. Yeah, there should be a little funny spring like that. Goes on its way round. And they're both the same. The ends are both the same at that end. Closer. Well, it's the same broom getting closer, mate. Uh, I just picked them both up. Oh, there it is there. Right. Can anybody know where's any of these barrels? 890. I wonder if the. I don't think it would. 
I should have tried it while it was on. Let's see whether the 380 bolt will go on the top of this crankcase because it looks the same as all the others. Right. Next thing, ah, we've got all the nuts in. And I'll have it tightened up. Why is that one still turning? Mm. Right. Coil. piece coil which is the same as the 380s and the 480s so if you ever I have my head gasket template if you ever want to um, make a harder coil go that's about a whole saw, whole saw. To um, adjust to get the coil, but it gave me a heck of a lot of rubber. Heck of a lot of other bits that individually would have to would cost a fortune. That's if you could find them. Somebody's put a put a put a put a put a something on this. And actually casing. Now, before I took this apart, I marked where the outer magnet things are, whatever you call them, because um, I think it affects the timing. I just put a scratch across so that I can put it in the same position. Now I come to put it back together. Of the green tops had got. Right. My box of bits is getting smaller. If you ever do a job and And you're left with nuts and bolts left at the end. Don't worry. 
because the manufacturer always puts extra in in case you lose some so those were just the extra bolts that he put in because he thought you'd lose some That's too big, and the one I want is missing. The one that I want, the one that I want. thinking about it it's popped right through oh it's coming out the other side thought it would be easy to get back in that's a lovely job Mark one of the days, get my die grinders out and my flow bench, measure what the actual flow is um, and try and increase the flow in the mid-range when the draw from the piston, when atmospheric pressure pushing the air into the carburetor and into the cylinder is not as high as a peak up here but there is a way with my flow passage control that can increase the, the mid rpm airflow to almost the same as what you get at peak revs so instead of having to hold your saw at 10,000 rpm to make it cut because there's no grunt in the middle you can uh, get a fuel air charge in the mid-range to peak, just like torque on a car. It sort of, I was just waffling on in the back. I was just saying about increasing the airflow through these little two strokes in the, in the middle range to the peak um, to make more torque so I didn't have to hold the source of peak RPM and then they didn't bog down because you made, made more torque. Um, I said I might be tempted into getting my, my die grinders out and all my yeah. um, I've been retired now for oh, you know too long getting to the end <laughs> um, and if you could measure the airflow in the mid the bot was being pushed up through the transfer of passages as the piston descends and um, by blanking off uh, 
certain sections of the, the port and putting them on the flow bench, which I have. Um, oh, look at that. I could be tempted into getting the super flow out again. Um, you never know, folks. Let's see if we can get some get some real real grunt out of these chainsaws instead of having to turn them around at 10,000 RPM um, for them to cut. The reason for this being that there isn't enough fuel air charge um, in the lower ranges to produce a, well basically enough heat like the petrol but I'll be able to uh, expand the piston and push it down the bore um, but I digress oh ah. I did do a few carting lads um, in my day Ah, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, what is our next, do you think? Please. It was a sod to get off this one first time. With the old tapping, tapping procedure. I even sent for some bits and pieces to make up a, a puller and some high tensile bolts just to go in there so that when it's pushed on, there's this, there's this. And put a bar across here, one to there, and bolt through the centre, put the screw in and pop it off. But I'll give it one last bang with the number seven hammer and it's uh, and it worked. I could get it lined up. Get it lined up. Where's it? Allen key. Yeah, that's it. thread, right hand thread, left hand thread, go oh, on it's man, I think I've caught the threads when I was getting it off. It's not a left hand thread, it's a fucking right, isn't it? It's the, it's the one on the other side that's a left hander. Or a right hander. To get the. Um, Tightened it up. 
I thought it went solid. It's um, it's too long. That's why it won't tighten down on that this one that turns around and around. Uh, I put the wrong length bolt in, and it's catching the fins. So along. It should be. Be that one. Now this one should go solid. Yep. Another one was bottoming out. Oh, listen to that. Didn't even got a piston ring in. Right, I've got time, I've got to go out at half past. I've got to be down the road for half past one. So it's coming up to one o'clock, ten to one of time. One of time to do these. Right, I've got to put the uh, together.